Hi friends, welcome to Stamping with Wow. It's Jennifer Sasaki, your favorite Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And guess what I'm going to be doing today? Having an awful lot of fun. I'm making cards using our new in colors from this bad boy. This is the new annual catalog that is debuting on May 4th, that's next Tuesday. And I cannot wait to crack this puppy open and show you all the yummy goodness in here. But for today, I'm gonna show you how to make this beautiful card. Now I made a few versions and I thought we'd make the other two colors on camera. So next Tuesday, I will crack this puppy open. I hope you're around for my Facebook Live and see all the yummy goodness that's coming our way in the next year. Okay, so here's all the sheer ribbons. So you can see I'm using all the different sheer ribbons on each color because I'm trying to show a sampler of our color choices. Those are the in color jewels. So they're very pretty. And we're going to be using this double oval punch and Flowers of Friendship stamp set. So this is the stamp set. This is the stamp we'll be using. And we're using Little Card Big Thanks. But this is really nice. There's many thanks from all of us. Thank you for everything. And life is better with friends like you. And then these flowers work with the bundle. This is the Flower and Leaves Punch and they work with this. So the other two colors that I haven't used yet are the Fret Pale Papaya and the Fresh Freesia. So those are the two cards we're gonna make. Here is my store website and here's my host code and I'm gonna keep this host code valid through May 4th now because May 4th is when you can or place an order with the new Stampin' Up! catalog and since I have to place an order to get the um, champagne rhinestones I'm giving away when you use this host code by placing a minimum order of $35 or more. Um, I, and I, I just want to place my order on May 4th instead of May 3rd. So if you haven't seen my card class, I've been talking about it every time I go live. This is the card class I'm offering through um, for the month of April. It's using the Fine Arts Suite. It's in our spring catalog on page 32 and 33 and we're using this designer series paper it's called fine out art floral it's 1150 for 12 12 by 12 sheets and so i'm going to be doing a tutorial and i post all of this on my facebook group um stamping with wow online card classes so you have to be invited to that group how do you get invited all you have to do is place a minimum order of 35 dollars or more and i will place you in that group and then all the tutorials are free if you want the card stock for free all you have to do is then place a 35 dollar minimum order um, using what the suggested host code at that time and i will mail you all the card stock we're using for the online card class related to that host code. So this is the online card class related to this host code and the host code is the 4TQ4BS49 and that's expiring May 4th, 2021. So I will give you everything but the designer series paper. So on here you see this gray designer series paper. Um, that won't be accompanied, but I will give you a pre-scored sheet of this gray cardstock, and it'll already have this die-cutted image. I will send you an, um, supplies to make two of these accordion card holders, and then I will send you the cardstock to make two each of these four cards. This card holder, this accordion card holder, will hold all four cards and four envelopes with room so you could easily if you're adding a gift card or something in there there's a plenty of room in there where's the four envelopes here we go and four envelopes for mailing 
So there's still room in there if you wanted to put a gift card in there or something. And then this is using a magnetic closure so I could provide the magnets with that. So that's my card class. So you just wanna make sure you place that order before May 4th using this host code. And I will send you all the card stock you need for that card class. Back to the, back to our project. That was all my advertising for the day. So what we want is a piece of basic white that is gonna measure four inches by two and one fourth. And I like to use this uh, silicone mat. It's for gluing and you can rub off the glue, but I also like to stamp on it because it just gives a little cushion to the um, stamp. So here's the stamp I'm gonna be using and I'm gonna do it in the soft succulent. I've already stamped one in the evening evergreen. So we're just going to do one more in the soft succulent. And this stamp is a little bit bigger than the stamp pad. So you just want to make sure you get the tops and the bottom. And then go ahead and center that. If you're making multiples of this, you could go ahead and stamp them all on the sheet of paper. And then cut them out to your measurements. It's just easier to already have it pre-cut. We'll color one in alcohol markers and we'll color the other one using the aqua painters. How's that? But what I found using this, the watercolor painter, or the water painter, sorry. Um, so this is the evening evergreen. If, because you can do two things. You can take your stamp pad and press it down. I turn it upside down to press down because this is the hollow side. You want to get that into the stamp pad. And when you open it, there's some ink. Now you can use that ink, but don't add a lot of water because when you add the water, what happens? Like the brush naturally has water, but I'm not squeezing the brush to get more water. I just want a nice saturation of ink. And then it's probably helpful to have a spare piece of paper to just make sure oh i don't want it on the flower <laughs> oh and i'm coloring in the so that's a lot of water what it's gonna do unless i get it up is it's gonna cause my detail to fade out let me dry out this a little bit and then come in and just get ink and then when i color it i'm gonna color on this one because that's really the color so the ink can be harsher. See the water's just naturally coming out and then you could keep a paper towel or I have a dried baby wipe and I'm just wiping off if there's a glob of water. So it gets it that watercolor effect without oversaturating the paper. So I, I like that where the detail can stick around more. All right, and it doesn't have to be perfect. So this one is coming out a little lighter, but again, I want to remove that excess water on there. I don't want it um, getting too, I don't want the lines to fade that the stamp created. And then be careful because I got a little brushing right there when you do it so that you don't, uh, you know, don't keep splotching it up with the same area of the paper towel. I can show you with the alcohol markers. We'll save that for. And then when you are using the alcohol markers, I'm, boy, <laughs> the water painter, make sure you brush off so your brush is clear again. All right, so this is the light soft succulent and I like the brush in. So I'm just going to come in and I'm not going to use the dark on here. I don't want, these leaves aren't very big and I don't want a lot of um, transition going on. And I'm going to try color over that one a little bit just to see if it cleans it up a little bit. All right. Then this one we're going to do in the pale papaya. Since it is a light color in its own, I'm going to bring out the dark pale papaya. And then I'll come in with the light. So this is the bad part, like, not bad, but this is what you give up. So when you're stamping with 
the color, you get to keep that color in your flower petal. But when you're stamping with a different color, you know, you have to keep that different color in your petal. So that's the only bad part is, you know, we're using, we're having to keep that green veining in there. And then we're gonna come in with the light. There we go. And then we'll do watercolors for the purple. So again, we could press it down and get some ink in our lid. There we go. And I don't wanna add more water to my brush and I want my brush clean and dry. But the water's gonna come down. I'm just not gonna squeeze it in because I don't want it uh, waterlogged, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I want more color than water. So see how the color is more clean and Okay, right, so now we are going to move on or should we just stamp right now? All right, let's go ahead and just stamp right now. So here's my strip. I'm gonna see if I can get two more of these on here. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to use another one. So I'm doing the big thanks, little card, big thanks. This is the Fresh Freesia. There we go. And I'm going to punch it out using this double oval punch. I don't know if I'll be able to fit another, the last pale mango in here, but we'll try. There we go. <clears throat> no, there's not enough room. So we'll just file that. When you're doing bulk cards, it is easier to do each step in a um, bulk fashion. Okay, so on these cards, we did um, I did a pleating on it. I think it came out really cute. So let's do a pleating. So we're going to need a piece of the Pell Papaya, and we are going to need a piece of the... Uh, I'm using the 2021 Designer Series paper for these. And there's two different patterns. We'll use one of each pattern. So this pattern is the check or this floral, flirty. And then this is like a line dot pattern. And then there's um, like a checkered square pattern. So I like this side of this, of the two sides here. I like this one. That's what's right here on the green. And then on, on this pink one, I obviously have that floor, floor de, <laughs> that French word. <laughs> so we're going to do one of each of those. So what we want to do with the designer series paper, let me clear off some of my workspace. 
gonna have to bring out my trimmer. We're done with the alcohol markers. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this, is so we're gonna keep, we, since this is, in my opinion, we're doing the up and down lines. So this is a um, directional paper. So you wanna make sure you cut it off at the right point. So I'm gonna trim this down to five and a half inches because it's gonna go from the top of my card to the bottom of my card. And I that's what I need, five and a half inches for that. So I can save this for something else. And then I'm gonna cut this from point to point. I was gonna say in half, but it probably still is a half. It's just a weird half. So in my cutting gutter right here, let me see if I can bring you down a little bit more so you can see it. So I have the tip of this paper in the actual cutting gutter. And on the other end, I have it also in the cutting gutter. So when I lay down my guide, it's going to cut it from tip to tip in half. And then I only need one of those. So then we are going to score it. Oh, one of these has to be, that's the six inch side. So this paper is, oh, we're gonna have to do it on the back side. We can do this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna use it on the back side. We're gonna start at one and three fourths, and we're gonna use our scoring blade. So at one and three fourths, we're gonna score the diagonal. This is the six inch side, and this is the five and a half inch side. So make sure that when you're working on this, let me come back up a little bit. Um, this is your five and a half inches. So where's that ruler? Here's my five and a half inches. So see how my point's ending there? Six is way down here. So make sure that this long side up at the top is the six inch paper, six inch side, not the five and a half. So your first score is one and three fourths, and then I wrote them down on a book. Here we go. The next score is, see if I can come in a little bit more for you. We can include it for a while. Okay, so the next score is at two and one fourth. So what it is, is you're doing um, half an inch and then three fourths, half an inch and three fourths between each one of these. So that's what these measurements are. So we're at two and one fourth. Now we're gonna go another three fourths inch to the three inch. Then we're gonna go a half inch to the four and a half. Then we're gonna go three fourths to the four and a quarter. Then we're gonna go a half inch to the four and three fourths. And then we're gonna go three fourths an inch to the five and a half. So you should have a sheet of paper with a bunch of lines. The first, this tip, we're gonna, oh wait, let me flip. Oh, I have to use this side the way I trimmed it. Darn, all right. It'll still be pretty. It's my preference is the other way. So you're gonna accordion fold it. Every other one, you're gonna go in the opposite direction. Doesn't wanna fold. And then make sure it stays straight at the top. So every other score line, you're gonna go in the opposite direction and you're just making an accordion fold. And then you should look like this when you're done. And then if your stuff isn't straight at the top, just give it a good pinch. And we're gonna hold that aside and we're gonna do this one. Okay, so this time we're gonna make sure we don't mess up when we do it. So we're gonna cut this down to five and a half inches. This paper is not as directional like the other one. So we'll set that aside. Now, if I do my point to point, let's see if I can bring you up a little bit so you can see I have both points in the gutter. I just want to make sure. Okay, that's my six inch side. So that's correct. Yeah, if I do it this way, it'll be fine. So you want to make sure that your six inch side is right here. That way the pattern you want, unless you don't care about the pattern, then it doesn't matter. You just want point to point in your gutter, your cutting gutter, and then you're going to slice it in half. And then 
your six inch side is gonna be up at the top and you're gonna start at the one and three fourths and we're gonna start scoring. Again, half inch to three fourths inch. So at one and three fourths, we're gonna go to two fourth. Then we're gonna go to three. Then we're gonna go to three and a half. Then we're gonna go to four and a quarter. We're gonna go to four and three fourths. We're gonna go to five and a half. All right, and then we're just gonna remove our trimmer because I believe we're done with that puppy. So then I wanna fold to me, the little corner, I fold it towards me. And then the next one you're gonna fold on the back. Then you're gonna fold it to you, away from you, to you, away from you. This stuff should not line up to each other. It should have a quarter inch separation between each one because you're creating a layer. You're creating like a pleated layer is what you're creating. So that's why one of the distances between the score lines is three fourths inches and one of the distances is a half inch. Now, what we could have done before we did all that was we could have took some stamp and seal um, before we activated the score lines, or you can do it after like I'm doing now, but we're gonna just fold that all back together and now it's gonna stick to each other. Maybe we should have done that on the back end because now I have stamping seal right here. So let's scratch that. Don't do what I just did. Let's do it on the back end and we'll recover that from the pale papaya. It's just that because then I added sticky on the top and we don't want sticky on the top. So what we're going to do is on the back side of your paper, this is the back side of my paper. Now let's try that. Um, strip of stamp and seal. And then on the front side, let's fold it the way we want it. There we go. And then it won't matter. Oh, it does matter on that first piece. So we need a little bit of glue on that one. So let's go ahead and use some of this. And we'll just get it. Oh, that was a lot. When we fold it or we'll just take our baby wipe to get up the excess There's bone folder and you can just crease those down they're still gonna have lift you can't flatten it the only way you can flatten it is if you really just put it glue them down like i said on the first one okay so now what we're gonna do is add these to our card bases so i did teepee folds so TP folds are these versus the stand. Um, it's just your preference for that. And then we'll just put some more stamp and seal just to keep it clean. And I'm putting light colors with each other. And then I'm just gonna run some stamp and seal at the top of here. Cause I want it to stay down at the top, but I don't want it to be glued down at the bottom. And I'm just lining it up to my folds. If you have slight overhang, just trim it off. If you have too much lifting in your pleated area, you can easily um, glue something down. Like right here, I want more. I want the first piece to stay down, but I'm still staying up at the top with it. We're gonna put a ribbon in here and it's gonna hold these down a little bit better too but I feel like you do want a little bit of lift for texture. Isn't that cute? All right, so we're gonna do the same thing with this one. We're gonna add some stamp and seal. And we're just gonna start it in that right, the right-handed. Yeah, right hand corner and press it down. So that's what's nice about stamping seal. I made the first couple of cards using glue, the Tombow, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna try stamping seal because 
it dries faster and everything else. I got a little mark on my card. All right, now we're gonna use um, the same color ribbons. You want a nine inch piece of ribbon to wrap around the, in the front flap of the card. So I'm just gonna cut a nine piece of ribbon. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my flower and my sentiment because I'm lining the bow up around here and it's just easier if I already have my flower on. So I'm going to pop it up on dimensionals. And I'm going to probably put one in each corner and maybe one in the center because I am i don't want a saggy center, a saggy middle. We all have saggy middles, but we don't want one on our card. All right, and then just look at your placement when you're putting it in. I'm just kind of lining it up to be here and I'm looking at the pattern to see where I want it to hit. And then on this guy, we're going to put one dimensional on the outside oval. And then you might want to put a little bit of adhesive on the other side. So it can, it's going to lay on top like so. And then we can add some pretty jewels. So I don't like to fight the adhesive flap all the time, so I just cut it down and then I just pull them out as I need them. Just makes it a little easier. And if you have any mistakes, that's now is what you'll use to hide them. And we'll just and I'll put one right there. And then when we add, we could color with a little wink of Stella. So our flower has a little sparkle to it. Gives the leaves a little sparkle. And we'll give our sentiment a little sparkle. Now what we're gonna do is wrap this. And if we're using a full sheet of cardstock on here, I would definitely hide this behind that sheet of cardstock that covered the whole card. But since we're not, we're gonna wrap it all the way around the inside of the card. And I'm doing it, it's probably a quarter inch down. I'm doing it so it's right in, above the image that we're putting on. And then I like a glue dot for this part. So the piece that's going to be on top, I'm going to put a glue dot on it. And align that about where I want it because that's where my bow is going to hide this meeting. Don't do this on the inside of the card because it'll be noticeable. So here's what the inside of the card looks like. So you don't want you don't want there to be a seam in here because when they open their card, they would see that. So now we're going to tie our bow real quick. I prefer a bow maker, and I'm just doing a single bow. The bow maker, um, you can do double, triples. What I do is I try to, I adjust it to adjust that my tails aren't too long, because then I don't want to have excess waste if I don't need to. So I don't make a huge bow. And then what I do recommend is that you keep one pair of your scissors just for ribbon because these are dull when it comes to ribbon. So what I'm going to do is order another pair and put ribbon on them. So I know that those are my ribbon scissors because sometimes I'm gnawing away at the ribbon. Anyways, so here's my glue dot. I love to put the attached bows with glue dots because it's so simple and I'm putting it right where my seam is so you won't notice it. And then that's that's pretty much the ins outside of my card. We'll do the inside. Let me get the purple card caught up. We're gonna add some glue dots. Glue dots, I'm sorry, dimensionals. <laughs> Just kind of starts resonating in your head. You're like, I think I said glue dot. All right. And again, you're going to look at your placement.
figure out what we're gonna stamp on the inside. We could use this, that's cute. Life is better with friends like you. It could definitely apply to a thank you card. And we could do this ban of flowers on the top and bottom. All right, we'll do the sentiment. And we'll clean that. And we'll do the sentiment. And we'll clean that. We'll do the flower. And we want that to be straight. Clean it. And we'll do the flower. See how quick you can make two cards? It's almost as much time as it would take to make one card. Grab some stamp and seal somewhere, somewhere. We'll just do that. This is the mango. So we're gonna mango papaya. There we go. This is the, what is it, Freesia? Fresh Freesia. I don't know who named the flower of Freesia. And there we have it, two cards. So if you're interested in any of the products you've seen today, here's my current host code, my store website. And this host code's valid through May 4th. May 4th is the first day you could start ordering any of the new annual catalog products. All this is new annual catalog products. If you're not interested just yet in the new annual catalogs, but you want the product to order this card class, um, you'll want to use this host code as well. And everything is in the spring catalog on page 32. You want the designer series paper and the ribbon and the stamp set minimum to be able to do these cards on your own. I'll provide everything else, but you will need those three items to complete the project. Um, place a minimum $35 order, and I will send the cardstock to you for free. All right, and there we have it. Here's the other in colors. I hope you're as excited as I am about what is coming in on May 4th. Can't wait to show you the album, the album, the catalog. So um, I'll do a Facebook Live on Tuesday, and I'll be happy to walk you through the catalog. If you would like a catalog and you do not already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would be happy to send you one. So just PM me, um, DM, PM, email leave a comment on this video and I will be happy to send you out a catalog. Thanks for watching. If you like this, please like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.